Welcome to Revival Time Hub, the fire shall ever be burning upon the altar, it shall never go out. I want us to lift up our hands to heaven. Something mighty is already happening in this place. And I want you to lift up your hands to Jesus. Lift up your hands to the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. In this atmosphere of worship, many things are happening. As I stood there just joining in the worship from Pastor McDowell to Pastor Nathaniel, I sensed a very strong healing anointing just flowing across. And I'll be up for a very brief time tonight, but I want to minister right away. I sense a very strong healing anointing. Behold the glory of the Lord. Behold the glory of the Lord. Behold the lion and the lamb. <laughs> Behold the glory of the Lord. Behold the lion and the lamb. Behold the glory of the Lord. Hallelujah. Listen. The Bible says in Acts chapter 4 and verse 33, it says, with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ then he says, great grace was upon them all. Great grace was upon them all. Hallelujah. How many of you believe in the healing ministry of Jesus? Now, very quickly, I want to minister to the sick. I just want to speak. There's such an anointing. I just sense an outpouring already happening here. A strong anointing coming upon people. Receive it right now. Strong anointing. Strong anointing. Revival is here. Revival is not coming. Revival is here by the Spirit of the living God. A strong anointing. Such a strong anointing. I want you to place your hand right now. Place your hand where you're trusting God for a miracle right now I want you to lay your hands by faith the power of God is strong in this place lay your hands by faith hmm. hallelujah and I'm, I'm going to ask pastor not to blow that trumpet just one time and then I will release the power of God such an anointing in this place. I believe in the healing ministry of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now listen to me. The Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please him. It says, for he that cometh unto God must come believing, number one, that he exists, and then that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hallelujah. So you must open up your heart to receive, expect a miracle. The Bible says the man at gate beautiful. When Peter said, look on us, he looked at them expecting to receive. You can expect to receive. Amen. So as I lay my hands by faith, stretching it to your body, every part of your body, believe God for creative miracles, believe God for supernatural manifestations. And here's what we're going to do. We'll make this very, very fast. As I release the power of God upon you, miracles are already happening. I'm going to ask those who would have experienced a healing miracle right now, just perhaps a few of you for tonight, we need to give witness to the power of the Lord Jesus Christ in this place. 
And so I'm going to ask such people to come right to my left or my right. There will be officials there to just receive you. And we'll have a few of those testimonies in due course. But how many of you believe God for a miracle? And I see photos, I see some of you standing in for your loved ones. And that includes the many who are connecting around the world. We're releasing the power of God. Now you lay your hands, Pastor Nat, please go ahead. At the sound of the trumpet, I want you to release your faith. Miracles are happening now. Hallelujah. Now in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, we have come with the power and the glory of God over America. I speak to every devil of infirmity, every spirit that has plagued your body in the name that is above all names. I command those devils to leave now. In the name of Jesus, I command those devils to leave now. Every devil of infirmity, you leave now. 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 I decree and declare, be healed in the name of Jesus. My God, such power is flowing from this place. Be healed now. Blood conditions be healed now. Blood conditions be healed now. Deaf ears, complete deafness or partial deafness be opened now. Ears be opened now. There's a lady you came here with severe pain. I'm seeing severe pain around your back. Very severe pain. You couldn't bend. The power of God is touching you right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. There's someone you're having problems breathing. You're not able to breathe. Um, it looks like asthma, but I, 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 you're, you're not able to breathe. In the name of Jesus, the power of God is resting upon you now. The supernatural power of God is resting upon you now. I'm seeing someone, it looks like a knee, a knee problem. It's like you have a problem with your knee. In the name of Jesus Christ. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is touching you right now. Touching you right now. Touching you right now. I'm seeing healing coming to a left shoulder. Left shoulder. The power of God is touching someone. You came here with pain. Left shoulder. Be healed right now. Be healed right now. Migraine headaches. Be healed in the name of Jesus. There's someone you have. You have an incessant flu you've tried to treat it again and again and it keeps coming back flu by the power of the Holy Spirit your miracle comes now your miracle comes now in the name of Jesus I rebuke autism by the power of the Holy Spirit life to your body life to your body let that river of life flow through you in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus there's someone having very severe heaviness around your chest in the name of Jesus you are healed now you are healed now you are healed now you are healed now I'm seeing someone, you're not able to move your fingers. I don't know what the problem is, but you're not able to move your fingers. The power of God is touching you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now I'm going to ask those.
close everyone to check themselves but the Lord is just ministering to me right now that the grace for prayer and intercession is going to rest on a few people right now listen like you will be learning it is impossible to birth a revival if you do not understand the art of prayer therefore I stretch my hands now from the left to the right the back to the front let that grace rest on you take that grace now take that grace now take that grace now I release that anointing upon you now prophetic intercessors arise by the power of the Holy Spirit I release that anointing upon you men and women Deborah's receive that impartation by the Spirit of the Lord in the name of Jesus I release that impartation upon you right now in the name of Jesus Christ the grace to travail until revival comes the grace to press the grace to hold on to the horns of the altar till you break through in the spirit I release that grace upon you by this impartation many ministries will arise many prophetic ministries will arise we lose you we lose you from slumber. We lose you from slumber. We lose you from slumber in the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hope you are receiving. The Lord is ministering to me that there are four people here. A very mighty healing anointing. There, you, you are in a season in the spirit. You have seen this in your dreams and your visions and you are about to step into a very mighty dimension of the healing anointing. Please help them. I stretch my hands wherever you are. Let that fire, healing fire from heaven, let it rest upon you now. Let it rest. Let it rest upon you now. Men and women, an outpouring of that healing grace an outpouring of that healing grace an outpouring of that healing grace in the name of Jesus Christ there's a lady I'm seeing a miracle for a lady the left your left the left side of your breast I don't know what the issue is looks similar to the sister who gave her testimony here but a miracle is happening to you right now a miracle is happening to you right now in the name of Jesus Christ a miracle is happening to you right now the Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing an email and the title now I'm not just I'm not just speaking gibberish I'm seeing that email congratulations this is what I'm seeing an email this is what I'm seeing someone will come and give that testimony here i'm seeing an email i'm just allowed to see the you know the the title congratulations you're my glory the lifter up of my head you're my glory the lifter up of my head you're my is above all names the name that is above all names 
again I'm seeing a lady just right here you're not able to move because I think there's something that has to do with your bones or so but the power of God is resting upon you right now wherever you are the anointing of the Holy Spirit is resting upon you right now in the name of Jesus the anointing of the Holy Spirit is resting upon you right now the Lord is bringing you miracles by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah now please listen you'll be seated shortly but I want you to listen I want you now I don't know how possible this is but there is a gentleman and there is a lady both of them will shout loud under the anointing now it is the influence of the spirit it's going to be a loud shout It is not an empty shout. The Bible says the shouts of joy and victory resides in the tent of the righteous. In the name of Jesus, it is the shout that brings down Jericho. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ, it's the shout that brings down Jericho. The shout that brings down Jericho. Hallelujah. Help that lady, please. In the name that is above all names, my God, miracles are happening here. Please don't be tired. You are receiving. You are receiving by the Spirit. You are receiving by the Spirit. Two more declarations and then you will be seated. Two more declarations and then you will be seated. Here's a prophetic word for someone. Remember ye not the former things, nor consider the things of old. This is what the Lord is saying. I should speak to someone. In it may have been trouble and turbulence from January, February, March, April, May, June, now July. But the Lord is telling me to tell you, remember ye not the former things, nor consider the things of old. For behold, I do a new thing. Behold, I do a new thing. Behold, I do a new thing. I bring you into a new season. Behold, I do a new thing. I bring you into a new season. A new season. I hear in my spirit a new season for a family, a new season for an individual, a new season for a ministry, a new season in the name of Jesus Christ. 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 I still hear it again in my spirit. It's a new season. Remember ye not the former things, nor consider the things of old. It's a new season. A new season of psalmistry, receiving songs by the Spirit. A new season of the prophetic, speaking the purposes of God over the nation. A new season of the apostolic. A new season of the teaching grace. A new season in business, a new season in career, a new season in your family. Ebata shabara ko sabrantis kele beretos kubra hasgieta, shalaga de beretos kubra digada. Pray in the spirit for one minute, if you can. This is part of the meeting. It's a prophetic meeting. Pray in the spirit. Go ahead. Shala gabranda gabereka tosko labranda gabos. Embrata kaparatu kopreske leberento sevreski badash. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Please listen. Here is another prophetic word for someone. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, if you will set aside the time to see him, you will find 
the things you've been looking for. Listen, there are many things we try to look for that can only be found in his presence. And the Lord is bringing this prophetic word to someone that you are in a season where you need to avoid distraction away from the noise. Perhaps this is to a man of God. Perhaps this is to a prophet in the making, an apostle in the making. And the Lord is saying you are busy. There are too many things around your life. Too many things. Legitimate things, but they are distractions. You need to set aside the time to seek his face, to know him. When you find him, you will find many other things in his presence. Do you receive that word? In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, I'm going to speak one more time over your life. I want you to check yourself immediately. I'm done speaking. If you need to make a call, there's such a strong anointing for someone you're feeling just your right side from your feet down to your hand is the anointing of the Holy Spirit moving. Now, the moment I make that declaration, very quickly, let's take five or ten minutes out of my time. And I'm going to ask those who have been touched by the power of God to just make their way to an official here or there. There's somebody who will just give you room to just testify very quickly. Let's take a few testimonies celebrating the hand of God, a miracle, something has happened to you. I'll speak one more time. We'll have that very quickly and then I introduce my session by just giving us a background for this conference and then we're done for tonight. Are you ready to receive? Now in the name of Jesus, in addition to all who have been healed, whether I have mentioned your case prophetically or not, in the name that is above all names, every sickness, every infirmity here represented, I declare be healed from it now. Shout a believers, amen. Be healed now. From the crown of your head, my God, the power of God is moving upon someone. You will check that pain and not find it again. You will check that pain and not find it again. Headaches be healed in the name of Jesus. Eye conditions be healed in the name of Jesus. Ear conditions be healed in the name of Jesus. If you couldn't move any part of your body, begin to move it now in the name of Jesus. If you came with someone who is sick, help them release their faith for a miracle right now. If you couldn't walk in the name of Jesus, begin to walk now. You couldn't move, begin to move now by the power of the Holy Spirit. By the power of the Holy Spirit. There's someone you could not bend immediately after this prayer. Check yourself and try to bend by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me someone you've had some kind of um, abdominal problem. I don't know what it is, but it comes with excruciating pain. Right now, the power of God is touching you in the name of Jesus Christ. Be healed in the name of Jesus. 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 Now we're going to celebrate Jesus in one minute and I want you to check yourself the moment you find out that a miracle has happened. I know there are people the power of God has touched them. Please clear the way for them if they are coming for their testimony. Those online, there should be a link where you can send in your testimony. Let's take a few testimonies right now to glorify Jesus. Since Pastor Nat is still here with me, I'll just let him lead us in worship for one or two minutes very quickly and then we'll have the people. So do well, check yourself. You need to confirm yourself. Please do so. Just come and stand here or here boldly. Don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. People are coming. Let's celebrate them. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Yes, sir. So just for a minute or two and then you make your way to the front. Let's take a few testimonies to the glory of the name of the Lord. Yes. Check yourself and make your way to the front right now. 
Let's celebrate them as they come. Celebrate them as they come. Celebrate them as they come. Is this the best you can do? Celebrate them as they come. celebrating miracles already in this place look what Jesus is already doing look what Jesus is already doing hallelujah to Jesus be all the glory let's take some of the testimonies apostle we have powerful testimonies of healings here so many testimonies of healings here. We have this uh, little girl. She Please be seated head. for a while. Be seated for her. Yes, Apostle, she hit her head uh, two weeks ago. She came here with excruciating pain. Excruciating pain. Yes. I'll just let her testify herself. Go ahead very quickly. So there was, um, I was at the pool with my sister and my brother. And I sat on like this machine or whatever. And I sat wrong and my sister pushed me. And I... I hit my head really bad and it's been hurting and even before you started like um like healing um it hurt when I touched it but now when I touch it it's gone and now no pain okay. someone celebrating Jesus the healing Jesus healed forever in the name of Jesus next person very quickly apostle here is a testimony of healing back pain of over 10 years back Broken. pain over 10 years. Let yes. me hear her. Yes, I've been having back pain since I started having kids. And then it's been really worrying me. But yes. I don't feel nothing right now. And I started having breast pain on this right um, last uh, on Saturday. But now I don't feel nothing. Check yourself. That's nothing. Bend down. Go ahead. Any pain. Any pain. Come on. Are you giving Jesus praise, America? The mighty hand of God. God bless you. Next person. Very quickly. Apostle, here also we have medically confirmed, even the previous ones, all testimonies are medically confirmed. Testimonies of healings in the breast. I'll just let her speak. Go ahead. Your Praise name and your testimony. Yeah. My name is Beatrice Swana. Praise the Lord. I came here, I've been in a hospital several times, like many, like three years now. I've been having some strange movement in my, uh, my left so when the, uh, the sister was testifying, I kind of feel like I'm burning all over me here. I feel burning, like burning, really burning. Yes. But when I 
apostle came up there and he said, somebody is receiving the same testimony. I felt like I was, I was completely going to knock out. And then I've, right now I can really feel, Check I don't yourself. feel anything. I don't feel anything again for No me. pain. No pain. No pain. Thank someone you. celebrating Jesus. Mighty things by his spirit. Yes, go ahead. Testimony here of the sister that you spoke about who came in with asthma, unable to breathe. She asthma. Was able to breathe. Now I'll let her testify. Go ahead. Hi, um, my name is Vanessa. Yesterday, well, a week ago, I felt this attack, asthma attack. Um, I've been calling my doctor for him to prescribe something because it was so unusual. My chest was so tight. As the revival progressed, my voice went away. My chest got tighter. Yes. Yesterday, I forced myself to come. Yesterday, while we're in workers' meeting, when you took the stage, my um, I took the inhaler to start to use it, but then my voice started to come out. And today, I really can talk, and the chest pain going away. I could not oh, even no. go 20 seconds without coughing. Now I can stand and talk, and I'm not even coughing. I can speak. Give Thank Jesus God. Praise, Thank you, my Jesus. God. My God, my God, listen, I want you to see these miracles as a sign from Jesus that something new, something fast is coming over America, something prophetic. You believe that? Shout amen. amen. Hallelujah. Yes, go ahead. You spoke about someone with shoulder pain. Yes. He has had pain in his shoulder for seven years. Seven years. And while he was here in the meeting, after he spoke about it, he was able to start moving his hand. Go ahead. Yes, Apostle, I have had this pain on my shoulder for about um, seven to ten years before. Then it disappeared and it came back um, about one month ago. Yes. And has been so, so uh, painful. And it feels like there's something moving in my shoulder. And right now? And right now. It's Lift gone. it up. Down, up, down, up, down. Any pain? Celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. Go ahead. She has had resistant flu for a long time and has not been able You're to... You're the lady with the flu. Yes, sir. How long has it been? I've been having it off and on since the, um, since the ending of last year. I've had okay. it like five times now. Yes. And I've taken all sorts of medications. They never work. And it didn't go? It didn't go. It's just wear off and then come. Back. I was actually flight, fighting flu this week. I had I have a ball of tissue in my bag because I've been blowing my nose and you prayed against this stand flu and my nose was completely clear. I can breathe properly. What was impossible? You made possible. Jesus. Let's hear her testimony very quickly. She has pain in her shoulder, her left shoulder. And her left shoulder. About that and it's gone. Please help those under the anointing. Yes. My name is Eden. Um, about earlier this week, I had excruciating pain in my left shoulder. And my mom had to massage it. And I didn't know where the pain came from. But as soon as you mentioned my case, the pain left my body immediately. Completely. Yes. Never returns again in the name of Jesus. Go ahead. Of pain healing supernaturally, but this case we have a 19 year situation of bad eyesight. Bad Broken eyesight, bad eyesight, poor eyesight. We just okay. listen to our testify. Go ahead. Um, since about middle school, um, my eyes were really poor, I couldn't see far away, and I would wear glasses to see the, the board in you class. You needed to use glasses, yes, um, yes. even when driving and at night. Um, but you were ministering to people who had issues with eyesight and then I could see clearer. I can read the Dickies Arena. It's clear now. Your face would have been blurry, but I can see the detail. Come on now. Face. 
Jesus, yeah. You have done it again. Jesus, yeah. In your special way. Listen, it means there are some things you could not see in your life. Some opportunities you could not see. By this miracle, God is saying, I am opening your eyes. I'm bringing you into certain realities. Who is receiving? Certain things you couldn't see. Someone shout, I receive. Shout it again, say, I receive. Hallelujah. My God, look what is happening here. Apostle, we have another testimony. Breast, pain in the breast healed supernaturally. Pain in the breast. Yes. How long? For the last two weeks, um, it has been throbbing so bad. Yes. And even when I touch it, it gets worse. But as soon as, soon as you declared, I've been pressing on it and I am healed. Hallelujah. Give Jesus praise. Give Jesus praise. Okay, next person. Apostle, Very healing good. in the knee. Pain in the knee heals supernaturally also. How long has it been? About two months. Um, I fell in a garage. Um, my knee came in contact with concrete. And um, it's been hurting. And supernaturally today, it's healed. I can turn my knee sideways, which I could never Run. do. Run. Run. Go ahead. Look at this. Someone celebrate Jesus. No pain. Gone forever in the name of Jesus Christ. Gone forever in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, please. He came in with chest pain this evening and supernaturally the pain is gone. The pain is gone. Yeah, so, uh, Apostle, whilst you were ministering, um, I felt um, in my spirit that I had received my healing. So I came to share my testimony. Amen. Jesus, place your hand there. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, perfection for you in the name of Jesus. Perfection for you in the name of Jesus. Is there someone with the name Susan or Susanna? Susanna. You are wearing a light jacket, like a sweater. Some, a sweater. Is there someone like that? What's your name? Please verify. Make sure. Huh? Susan. Susan. You believe in the power of God, my dear? Yes. <laughs> You're surprised. I've been here since 10 a.m. So. How do I know you've been here? You see, you see how your faith, the power of God is coming upon you. And the Lord is saying, I should tell you, you are stepping into a new season. There are so many things that have been happening around your life and you are asking God. I'm seeing you sit down and you are saying, God, where are you? I love you. I've served you, but I've not seen the reward. The Lord is saying, I should tell you that the one who singled you out, Susan, that in the name of Jesus Christ, just to comfort you and to let you know that he's still God. I release that anointing upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. You believe in the power of God? Go ahead. Let's, let's have a few. Apostle, I'm just going to let the medical person speak properly. Go ahead, please. She reports that she had breast cancer that had metastasized and spread towards her bones. That she had difficulty walking. She had pain. Breast the, cancer. That had Me spread, sir. Medically verified? We don't have medical reports, but today what we are verifying that she couldn't do, that she can do now is pain on her right leg. Pain. How long has the cancer been? Five years. Run. Come on, America, the God of wonders. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. My dear, young lady, place your hand on your chest. In the name of Jesus, I come. 
curse that devil right now be released forever in the name of Jesus Christ you are perfected now perfected forever in the name of Jesus there are so many testimonies let's see how many we can take now we'll still have room to, to take at other sessions but um, can you imagine I've not even said anything good evening America okay Let's, Apostle, Apostle, we have several healings of pain in the knee. So we just take our, our mother here, pain in the knee. I've had this pain for over three years. The doctor told me I was going to have surgery, but when Apostle was talking about knee pain... You were to have surgery? Yes, the power of God came upon Which me. of the knees now? Right knee. Okay. Very swollen. How long has it been? It's more than three years. Okay. Yes. Can you do whatever I'm doing? Any pain? Try running, ma'am. Let's celebrate Jesus. Never return to you again by the power of the Holy Spirit. Can we? Yes. We have, we have several testimonies of back pain being healed. She has had back pain for three years now. Three years? Yes, sir. Um, as soon as uh, you came in and you said there was a healing anointing. I tried to touch my back to pray. I don't have any pain. Check it again. No pain. No pain. In the name of Jesus, perfection for you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Good evening, Apostle. I have been having a very sharp pain on my back for four months. I could not bend properly. But when you mentioned about my case, I tried to bend down. Go ahead, bend. Do what you couldn't do. Any pain. Let's celebrate Jesus. Any pain, he will never return to you again by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hold on, just, just a moment. I just saw a flash of light and the Lord is telling me that there's someone here, God is grooming you to be a great prophet. But there is, hold on, hold on, let me just prophesy. That anointing, as I'm speaking now, that anointing is going to rest upon you. The Lord is saying it's a new season. You may not believe it, but the anointing is coming upon you. You will begin to see, you will begin to hear a ministering by the Spirit of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, let it be a new season. You step into that prophetic office by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Okay, so here's what we'll do for sake of time. There are lots of testimonies. We'll just take two here. We'll take two here. Then um, we'll celebrate the rest. They can register their testimonies so that we can just, um, let me introduce the session. And then um, else we'll spend the whole time on testimonies. Look what Jesus is already doing. Look what Jesus is already doing. Hallelujah. Yes, go ahead. Apostle, we have several healings of pain in the knees. So we just line them up right now. Pain in the knee healed now. Various pains. Yes. Madam, I'm seeing an anointing coming on you. This woman, I just saw light now resting on you. And the Lord is saying it's a new season. Receive that grace now. By the power of the Holy Spirit, it's a new season for you. New season. It's a grace called favor. 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 It's nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want is be. It's nothing like your presence, Lord. It's nothing like your presence, Lord. like your presence Lord okay let's have one one last one very quickly I just want to testify and give the Lord Jesus glory and honor you said my case apostle for flu two days ago I was having a problem with my throat itchiness and last night I couldn't breathe and then this morning when I woke up I coughed up pure green and I coughed up three times over here and I felt the fire of God and now my throat is not itching Gone I've been healed completely. Gone completely it's like I'm brand new 
in the name of Jesus, healed forever Amen. by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's give Jesus Amen. a big hand clap. Okay. Apostle, here we have a creative testimony. She has had a mask behind her ear for seven years that has significantly reduced while she was in service today. A mask. Go ahead. Amen. Amen. Take a deep breath and then go ahead with your testimony. God, she's overwhelmed. What happened? A mass. Was well, a growth at the back of her ear? Oh, a she's, large she's one. crying. What happened? There was a big mass. And as we prayed, I believe God for it. So I, I saw that this becomes small. So I asked my husband to look at it. And he confirmed that this becomes really, really small. What Jesus is doing. To lay your hands on your head, the power of God is coming on you. Out of her now, in the name of Jesus, never returns to you again by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's give Jesus praise. She was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis since the age of 17, and she's been stiff on her right side. You arthritis, yes, sir. And you spoke about someone on the right side being healed, she can move now. Oh. The lady, yes. that is you, arthritis, yes. since you were six. Since I was 17, I came to the United States when I was 15. Two years later, my fingers started to swell. My whole body started to be in pain. And then right now, you were talking about a lady with the right side. My ankles were stiff. I couldn't walk. And now I can move my leg. Run. Let the devil see what Jesus is doing in America. Come on. Look at this. Rheumatoid arthritis. My God, I believe in miracles. I believe in the power of God. Hallelujah. My dear, lift your hands, the lady. I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus and I decree and declare that that demonic situation will never return to you again by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, my apologies, we may need, is it alright if we just pause for a moment? The miracles, I know that there are so many and all of you are itching to testify, but this is just the first night. We give Jesus praise. We give Jesus praise and we bless him for all the miracles and I declare them blessed. Please go ahead. You can register your miracles with the media, the PR, and um, would, would, would give you an opportunity to share the next sessions. God bless you in Jesus' name. Let's give Jesus a big hand clap. Big hand clap. Amen. How many of you were blessed by the amazing ministry of Pastor William McDowell? Thank you. Such, such an incredible, incredible man of God. I love you and I'm deeply grateful. Thank you. And then my friend and brother, Pastor Nathaniel. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, just, just let me have your attention for the next 10, 15 minutes just to introduce my session. Um, Leviticus chapter 6 and verse 13 says that the fire that burns upon the altar should not go off. And the Bible says that that fire must burn day day and night. I'll be doing a teaching series the course of the sessions called Revival Flames. Revival Flames. And um, tonight is part one because of our time. I'll not have the, you know, the liberty to just stretch us through the background, but just so we're able to. Now, history is full of time periods where there was a sudden move of God, an awakening, an outpouring across cities, across communities, right from the Bible. In fact, you read about the moves of God in a place like Nineveh. You read about the move of God in Babylon. You read about the move of God even whilst Jesus was upon the earth. And then the early church, in one day, they had a harvest of 3,000 people. And so... Um, 
every once and again you find spectacular moves of the spirit where there's a heightened sense of spirituality a heightened sense of righteousness a heightened sense of God consciousness um, in America here we have your history is full of spectacular moves of God the great awakenings the you know Azusa Street Revival and so on and so forth moments in history where God seemed to have moved in such a mighty way and um, our assignment here is to stand in faith with all who love Jesus and to rekindle the flames of revival over America hallelujah I believe that this is a great nation I believe that um, God has an agenda for this nation and we've been sent by God by the mercy of God to stand in faith with all who love Jesus and all who name the name of Jesus to show you ancient paths to show you scriptural principles for igniting and sustaining revivals hallelujah I'm a student of revival myself by the grace of God I've had the honor of being involved in awakenings and moves of God and um, let me define for you for tonight what a revival is I think that will be fair enough for tonight are you ready so a revival is a reawakening to true spirituality a revival is a reawakening to righteousness a revival is a reawakening from a state of dormancy spiritual dormancy when we talk about revivals we're talking about a season of reawakening where people suddenly come into a heightened state of God consciousness where they come into a state of holiness and righteousness loving Jesus like never before serving his purposes like never before revivals are often characterized by a restoration of love for Jesus and then zeal for spiritual things Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 14 says awake thou that sleepest he says and Christ shall give you light hallelujah and then to let you know that revival is threefold in its operation there's what we call personal revival that has to do with an individual being revived one who was once on fire ones who loved the Lord before and for whatever reason you went into a state of spiritual slumber an individual can experience revival number two the church the ecclesia can experience revival this is the second level of revival you find that in Ezekiel chapter 37 and verse 10 where we got the theme for this conference the Bible says they were once dry bones and they arose and finally became an exceeding great army so an individual can experience revival God's people as a church a corporate spiritual body can experience revival and then the third level is territorial revival a nation a city a community can experience revival an example is found in Jonah chapter 3 there's no time to read through the scripture but the Bible tells us that a prophet was sent by God to a land called Nineveh he was not sent to an individual he was not sent to a family he was sent to the entire nation Jonah runs away from the command ends up in the belly of the fish repents he's revived himself then he returns with the same mandate chapter 3 and verse 1 now he heads to Nineveh and he speaks to them and the king declares a fast from the king to all uh, those who are part of his cabinet down to the animals and the Bible tells us that on account of their repentance genuine repentance there was transformation so there's personal revival there's corporate revival as far as a spiritual family is concerned and then finally there is territorial revival if you're with me shout a loud amen hallelujah now haven't studied revival for a bit um, 
by the grace of God, I've read quite a number of books and spiritual resources um, as touching revivals. I have discovered that um, there are three areas we need to study as far as understanding revival is concerned. Number one, we need to study the birthing of revivals. How revivals are ignited because revival is likened to a flame and all flames and fires are ignited. Most people who talk about revivals do not take the time to study how that ignition happens. There are ancient principles, and I'll be sharing them with you in the course of this conference, how a genuine, sustainable, lasting revival is birthed. Number two, the second area of revivals that we need to study is how, why revivals die. It's important to not only study the ignition, but we must investigate why revivals die. Sometimes I'm amazed as I look at the current state of many cities and communities where there was once a mighty move of God. Some of those places have become um, centers of idolatry. Some of the buildings that used to be platforms for a mighty move of God. They become monuments today. Some of them reduce physically to ashes. There is a reason. There is an explanation as to why revivals die. The third area of consideration in learning the subject of revivals is we must learn the blessings or the fruits of revival. That every time a true revival happens to an individual, happens to a church, happens within a community and a nation like America, there are blessings and there are fruits. There are spiritual blessings to revival. There are economic blessings to revival. Are we together? There are technological blessings. Did you know that in the study of revival, you would notice that every time there was a major economic shift, a major technological shift, advancement, it coincided with prophetic moments of revival. There are blessings to revival. Are we learning now? Now, please write this down if you care or listen very carefully. I wrote here the tripartite features in my study of revival. Pastor Nat, I've learned that not every move of God can be called a revival. There are people who erroneously call just any outpouring a revival. And in my study, as I have studied, as I've experienced God in the capacity he's allowed me to experience him as touching the subject of revival, I have come up with what I call the tripartite feature of a true revival that every time there is a genuine revival there are three things to look out for if you do not find these features it is not a revival number one the first feature that qualifies any move any awakening to be called a revival is that there must be a restoration of God consciousness and true spirituality there must be a restoration of God consciousness, a restoration of true spirituality. This happens through repentance. This happens through a restoration of holiness and righteousness, a renewed love for Jesus and spiritual things. If you do not find this in any spiritual move, it is not a revival. Is someone learning? The first feature of a true revival is that there must be a restoration of God consciousness, a restoration of true spirituality, a restoration characterized by repentance, holiness, righteousness, a renewed love for Jesus and spiritual things. When you find people loving Jesus, pressing for spiritual things, that is a real genuine revival. Number two, the second feature of a true revival is that there must be multiplication of believers. 
multiplication of believers within that territory multiplication of believers there must be an increase within the community of the believers as a result of massive salvation it is impossible to have a genuine move of God a genuine reawakening a genuine revival and then the number of those who are obedient to the faith is left unchanged it's impossible when the Holy Ghost fell in Acts chapter 2, the Holy Ghost came on the day of Pentecost. In one single day, the Bible says they had 3,000 people. In one day, 3,000 people. That means if we do not have the believers in America, the number of genuine believers, spirit-filled believers on the increase multiplying, it means there is a desperate need for revival because something happens when the power of God rests upon a people there is a massive conversion from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son resulting to many who become obedient to the faith in fact the Bible puts it this way in Acts chapter 2 when you read from verse 42 to verse 47 the Bible says and the Lord added daily Daily, not weekly, not monthly, not yearly. The Lord added daily as many as should be saved. And I'm praying over America in the name of Jesus that there would be such a harvest after this conference. Children, husbands, wives, professionals that the Spirit of God will go around the length and the breadth of America drawing many to Jesus you believe that shout a loud amen so the first feature of a genuine revival is restoration of true spirituality restoration of God consciousness restoration of your passion your love for Jesus number two multiplication within the community of believers. Number three, a true revival must also come with territorial transformation. Territorial transformation. This is the third feature. There has to be restoration within the community. A restoration of moral excellence. Are we together? A restoration of values. Then it translates to economic transformation technological transformation in second chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14 i'll quote for you the bible says if my people which are called by my name still remember the scripture it says they shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways it says then will i hear from heaven listen i will heal their sins but it would not just stop with them i will heal their land territorial transformation let me tell you this when a people reject God their territory will reject them when a people reject God something begins to happen around the territory that makes life difficult makes life um, makes life very uncomfortable for the people it is true are we together so restoration of your love and fire for Jesus, multiplication of believers, and then territorial transformation. Are you learning so far? We're discussing revivals now. Now, I just want to give you three keys, and then we'll pray. And this will be the areas of consideration. Number one, we're going to consider the Great Commission. Many of you may not know, but genuine revival, if you, if you do not take anything, if, if this is the only thing you take from this session tonight, then it was worth your coming. Genuine revivals are connected to the Great Commission. Genuine revivals, revivals that last Revivals that speak are connected to the Great Commission. That means if you do not understand the Great Commission, that is the mandate Jesus left with the church, 
the mandate of world evangelization, the mandate of discipleship, and the mandate of territorial transformation. If you do not understand the Great Commission, you can never experience a genuine revival. I'll tell you, the reason why most territories and most individuals and sadly most churches do not experience awakenings, outpourings and revivals is because there has been a deviation. Are we together? A deviation from our understanding and our obedience to the Great Commission. Now, I know that there are several things we can teach about. We should build believers holistically, but in order of spiritual priority, the Great Commission is the reason why we are called witnesses. That means no matter what else we teach about, no matter what other subjects we consider, if we neglect and ignore the Great Commission, there's no point receiving any empowerment. There's no point receiving any backing. The purpose for the backing, the purpose for the empowerment is to help us fulfill the great commission. You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. The Bible says you shall be witnesses unto me, unto me, unto me. The purpose for the power is to help you become a witness. So, revivals are directly connected to the Great Commission. Write this down, please. Revivals are directly connected to the Great Commission. I have studied the moves of God even within your nation. And I have found out that all who experienced genuine revival were all about the Great Commission. It is impossible to be involved in any other thing and experience genuine revival. The Spirit of God moves across a territory in honor, in honor to this global mandate of the harvest, discipleship, and territorial transformation. I know why our nation and many nations in the world are having a decline in spirituality, a decline in experiencing the power of God, is because for some reason Satan has deviated us. So we have placed emphasis on things that are outside of the Great Commission. For instance, you will seldom find the subject of souls, the harvest, the lost, being discussed in many Christian circles. It's been a campaign and a promotion of just personal comfort. And I'm not against that. There is a place for that, but it cannot replace the mandate. Are we together? If you come to my house for a visit, most likely I will refresh you. You would have something to eat and drink, but that is not your purpose of coming. If you now get distracted and we do not discuss why you came and your attention shifts to food, you've lost the purpose of coming. So prosperity and increase and breakthrough they are wonderful but those are supposed to be the benefits we enjoy while we serve while we serve while we serve when we become distracted from the mandate and our attention now moves to prosperity personal comfort how to make it and I'm not against these things they are part of the components for the holistic buildup of the believer. But in order of spiritual priority, we need to be restored to the mandate, the Great Commission. The reason why there's no backing and there's powerlessness in the church in ever increasing dimension is because we have not justified the need for that power. Our justification is not prayer. Our justification is our commitment to fulfill the Great Commission. You can pray and pray and miss. You are prayerful but ineffective because the purpose is not tied to kingdom come. Just personal gratification. Is someone learning now? I can tell you the reason why we are not seeing the move of God like we saw in the 60s and the 70s. Most of those people we call evangelists or healing evangelists, they were selfless people who were all about the kingdom. They wanted to see the mandate People like John Knox will cry in prayer and say, Lord, give me Scotland or I die. It's not about my personal comfort. I desire to see your kingdom come. I desire to see your glory revealed. 
when it becomes about him and his program, when it becomes about him and the mandate to the nations, then we are ready to experience a move of God. This is a very important introduction. There are people who pray for revival. They fast over revival. They desire revival, awakenings in any dimension. But did you know they cannot articulate the Great Commission? They do not even know what it is. Why should you be anointed when you do not understand the Great Commission? Jesus said, when I sent you, lackest thou anything? When I sent you, the message is what makes the man powerful. If you don't have the message, you should not be powerful. Listen, there needs to be a restoration of the Great Commission. It's a consciousness that every believer must have. The Great Commission is not a mandate for preachers. No. The Great Commission is not a mandate for prophets and apostles and teachers. The Great Commission is a mandate to, for all believers. So when the Holy Spirit walks in you, walks upon you, He releases you, transiting you from a believer to a witness. Then He sends you. It is at the point of being sent that you receive the empowerment and you can become an agent of revival. I can tell you this, I have studied in prayer, I have studied um, by reading books and by asking the Holy Spirit many questions. Why is it difficult to birth revivals across territories? The answer is what I'm giving you tonight. Our deviation from the Great Commission is the reason why we have not seen the move of God. Are we together? Show me a man, show me a church, Show me a people who are desirous to see the lost come home. Show me a people who are passionately committed to the program of Jesus. Beyond their personal comfort, beyond the mundane search for the things that occupy us, I show you a people who are ready for revival. Genuine revival. Are we learning now? Do I talk of the man Billy Graham? He was a man, as much as we have read, who demonstrated selflessness. His life was all about the desire to see Jesus revealed. In Koinonia, we say Jesus revealed and Jesus glorified. America, there needs to be a restoration to the Great Commission. We need to begin to edit the things that we teach and advocate from our pulpits and return God's people to the core, the centrality of the mandate. Beyond our personal comfort, beyond getting good jobs, as important as that is, beyond receiving favor, as important as that is, beyond receiving breakthroughs, if the entire circumference of your Christian experience is about receiving things for your personal comfort, you will not be an effective believer. In fact, you will not be a witness. Now, the average believer is self-conscious. All we want to do is to acquire, gather together as proof that God is faithful. And while that is true, it's important that we burn it in our minds even tonight that there is a mandate that is bigger than us. There is a mandate that is bigger than getting a house. There is a mandate that is bigger than getting a job. There is a mandate that is bigger than our personal comfort. God is not against our comfort, but in order of spiritual priority, the great commission, the mandate to the nations to see his glory, his power, his word, his life invade our territories. When you become consumed, oh, that's the word. That's the word. I just got it. That's the word, consumed. Beyond being passionate, the Bible says the zeal of the Lord when you become consumed with that passion to see the lost come home, then you can be trusted with the grace that brings authentic revival. Authentic revival. We desire the healing anointing outside of the Great Commission. We desire prosperity outside of the Great Commission. 
we desire all kinds of things that you know occupy our minds and occupy our pursuit America the Lord has sent us to bring you a message you want to see the power and the glory of God return to America like it was in the 60s the 70s I want you to know that the limitation is not from God's end he's ever ready to breathe upon his people he's ever ready to release that grace there needs to be an adjustment we need to return back understanding the Great Commission we need to rebuild the altar of the Lord first Kings chapter 18 and verse 30 when Elijah was going to call down fire the first thing he did was to rebuild the altar of the Lord to rebuild the altar let's set our priorities right as individuals as a nation when our spiritual priorities are right then we are ready for a move of God preachers we must rebuild the altar of the Lord the mandate to the nations the desire to see God's glory revealed the desire to see the lost come home Jesus gave us a prayer request before he left he said the harvest is truly plenteous but the laborers are few he said pray ye the Lord of the harvest that he might send laborers to his field America is God's field did you hear what I said America is God's field not just because the earth is the Lord's but anywhere the harvest is God calls it his field every city in America that means God is still in the business of reaching out to many that includes your loved ones that includes your unsaved ones it doesn't matter how long they've been away from Jesus Christ and we've been sent with a mandate tonight by the Spirit of God and by the Spirit of grace and introducing this session I'm helping you understand that an awakening a genuine revival a genuine outpouring a genuine awakening not just the name of a conference not just the title of a meeting an experience a lasting potent experience begins when we are restored to the Great Commission tonight we are going to take the time to pray and our prayer will first be for ourselves I will make an altar call shortly but I want us to pray the prayer is that God will reorder our priorities and that will rebuild the altar of the Lord in our own lives there are many of us here who are gathered listen to me and so many others following the truth about it is that we are not passionate about the things of God we are just sympathetic to spiritual things are we together we like the idea of church we like the idea of conferences we like the idea of Christian songs good preaching nice books we are just sympathetic but there is no definite commitment there is no press there's no zeal there's no passion there's no intention there's no drive as far as spiritual things are concerned no personal drive for prayer no personal drive for the word no personal drive for fellowship for the house of God no personal drive for evangelism such an old word has been forgotten by so many people there's a generation that does not even understand what that word means evangelism sounds old school no wonder the miracles went with it evangelism winning the lost helping them to find Jesus is someone learning tonight that God is counting on you and I to take his life to the nations to take his this gospel of salvation to the nations on account of our determination to fulfill that mandate we receive all kinds of empowerments including the grace to birth 
genuine revivals. Now, you notice anyone, whether in the ministry of psalmistry, like we received from Pastor McDowell, from Pastor Nat, what do you find common? The passion for Jesus. Every time you see passion for Jesus, void of self, void of building an empire and just making a name, you also find with it the move of God. You know, Pastor McDowell, I'd listen to your song, Stay, and whilst you were singing it here, I was almost, I'm not a very emotional person. You've heard me say, I've tried to cry on many occasions, and the tears don't just come, so I just gave up, and um, at least I cry in my heart. Are we together? But whilst I was listening to Pastor McDowell just sing that song, I could see the purity, the sincerity, that this was not performance. It was a man revealing his secret place and bringing people into that experience. <laughs> Pastor Nat was seated right beside me and he was almost in tears. I was almost going to reach out to him. I mean, he was so moved. I could see his worship. It was as though he was not coming up to minister. He was enjoying the worship and just soaking. And I said, this is it. This is the character, the template. This is how to set the table for a genuine revival. When it becomes performance, when it becomes the glorification of self, when it becomes distraction by and with mundane activities, I assure you there will be religiosity but not revival. There will be a lot of spiritual activities. We will replace our, our deficiency of his presence with so many things. It's the reason why the average believer is so busy but ineffective because we have brought in so many things as a remedy for the absence of his presence. Hallelujah. So we're going to pray. And this prayer tonight concerns everyone and to the many who are following. We're going to cry out, leave America. Let's deal with ourselves. America is not the land. America is the people. When you take away people, it's no longer called America. Are we together now? So when you would be learning, I don't want to go ahead of myself, that among the many components that sponsor revival is the preparation of the vessel that will be used. In addition to this orientation, having the foundation of the Great Commission, the next in our order of discussion will be the vessel. The Bible talks about earthen vessels. It is important to understand the vessel who will be used by God to frontier revivals. But tonight we are going to cry. It is going to be a genuine and a desperate cry. The next five minutes or so, it will be a time of uncensored worship crying our hearts in genuine repentance, in genuine brokenness. The Bible says, if my people, although they are my people and they are called by my name, it does not guarantee healing. They will need to humble themselves and then to pray, to seek my face, and then to turn from their wicked ways. The Bible says, then will I hear from heaven, I will forgive their sins and I will heal their lands. Can I tell you? Conferences like this do not need pointing fingers at people. If you still find someone who is wrong other than yourself, you're in error. Leave the government, we're coming there. Leave the wrongdoers, we're coming there. Tonight, you're going to be standing alone with Jesus crying out your heart the distractions the mundane pursuits some of you started loving Jesus living for him but many things stole his place in your heart many things may not be evil things and right now Jesus is not priority 
you are sympathetic to the Jesus idea but there's no genuine passion that passion needs to be restored tonight and that includes pastors you would think because a man is involved in ministry it doesn't mean he loves Jesus ministry can be a career it can be a ritual it's just that it's a ritual that is spiritual been captured by your love I can't explain now you have me and now I'm forever changed I've abandoned everything I've ever known now I surrender this life is not my own I belong to you I belong to you yes I belong to you listen my life changed when I got to a point where you see for me Jesus is beyond a savior I've come to a point where he's my everything everything and I mean it this is not just a preacher's talk I love him beyond preaching I love him beyond ministry what you see us do tonight is an overflow of that love and I'm praying like a virus that that passion will infect someone tonight a genuine hunger for Jesus hunger for Jesus that drives you to his presence hunger for Jesus that becomes the sponsor for your loving and reaching the lost hunger you know hunger is a gift from God every time people become sick in most cases the first thing they lose is appetite appetite hunger is proof of health if you are not hungry you are not healthy hunger is proof of health I belong to you yes I belong to you look at me you think the spirits over America are that powerful no it is the powerlessness of the saints that has made the spirits causing mayhem you believe me on that read the book of Daniel you will see one man one man who used his passion and fervency, held the spirits that control the Medes and the Persians. A parliament had to come up with a policy because a man's spiritual life became a threat to darkness. One man. One man. America, I love you, but with all due respect, listen to me. Satan seems to be over magnified within the nation. Leave Satan. It is because men of fire have not risen. Men of genuine power. Most believers really do not know what happened to man at salvation. There are three gifts that man received at salvation. This is what gives us the order that city to be witnesses number one at salvation all men receive the forgiveness of sin number two at salvation we become the righteousness of God in Christ number three at salvation we receive so way the life of God you need to understand this so is beyond everlasting life is beyond eternal life is a quality of life that upgrades an ordinary man to a God class and the signature of being in the God class is dominion 
Did you hear what I said? Dominion over systems and structures. Dominion over territories. You don't have to be in government to be in power. One man prayed and there was no rain, Elijah. So most believers do not understand what they received. Most believers think they only receive the forgiveness of sin. Others have gone a step further to know that they are now the righteousness of God in Christ. But very few understand that they've been upgraded. They are life-giving spirits. They sustain the ability to shift systems and structures. The Bible says, listen, it says, as my father has sent me, so send I you. But it remained a confession for many, many years. Listen to me. John 1 5 says, The light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Every time you see evil reigning within a territory, it is not evil, it is the absence of light. The Bible says, The light shineth, the light shineth, the light shineth. America, what you need is not a discussion over darkness. What you need is genuine fire, that the revival fire be rekindled like an Olympic light. And God sent us to join faith with all who love Jesus within this land. That it's time to say, Maranatha, come. Let revival come again to your schools, your homes, your offices. But you see, it shouldn't just end as a confession. Please get me as we prepare to pray. We need to rebuild the altar of the Lord. The fire will not fall even if you are Elijah until the altar is built. The first thing Elijah did was to rebuild the altar. Don't call upon him to come until the altar is rebuilt. What does it mean to rebuild the altar? Set your priorities right. What does it mean to rebuild the altar? Return back to God's emphasis. Emphasize what he's emphasizing and you will see his backing like never before. So tonight for the next five minutes, we're going to be pressing in, rebuilding our personal altars. Rebuilding that passion. Dead prayer lives need to come back. Dead word study lives need to come back. Spiritual carelessness. There needs to be restoration. Some of you, you see, based on God's prophetic timing for your destiny, by now, you should already be a witness, but you are still struggling to be a believer. The journey is from being an unbeliever to a believer, then a transformed believer, then an empowered believer, then a witness. Let me run through that straight line again. It starts from being an unbeliever, then at the point of salvation you become a believer, a carnal one, an ignorant one, un, you know, saved spiritually, but with a mind that is not transformed. Then through discipleship and structured mentorship, you become a transformed believer. Then empowerment comes in honor to that transformation. You become an empowered believer. When you become an empowered believer, your name changes. You are no longer called a believer. You are called a witness. Can I say this one more time before we pray? Every category I listed here is in this place now. There are unbelievers. You will not be a witness yet. The journey is still far. It starts by becoming a believer. And you become that by acknowledging the Lordship of Jesus Christ over your life. When you become a believer, the next project in the spirit is to contend for transformation. And that happens by the ministry of the word in partnership with the teaching priest. When you become a transformed believer, you need empowerment to give witness, validation to your transformation. When you are now empowered, 
your name changes. Jesus never called them witnesses while he was training them. No. He never called them apostles while he was training them. When he was done training them, he said the Holy Ghost will come and empower you. The moment that empowerment comes, you will no longer be called believers. You will be called witnesses. Now you can go to Jerusalem, Samaria, Judea, to the uttermost part of the earth. There are many in this place tonight. The altar you need to rebuild is your relationship with Jesus Christ. You're not even in the fold at all. You were invited and you came for a conference. You're welcome. There are those who are believers barely at the gates of the kingdom. They are only saved, nothing more. No spiritual understanding, no growth, no transformation whatsoever. Your prayer tonight will be a passion to grow. The Bible says, and Jesus increased, Luke chapter 2 and verse 52, in wisdom, in stature, in favor with God and with men. Jesus increased. All men can increase. Believers can increase. You can become a more superior version of yourself. And then, when you become a transformed believer, there are people here who are transformed. When you hear them speak, they speak mighty things deep things but there's no empowerment to bring defense and credence to the things they propose it is not new to them that Jesus heals but they cannot prove it it is not news to them that Jesus lives but they cannot prove it they are transformed when you talk with them they educate you spiritually but the empowerment to give witness some of you this is why God brought you to this conference you are not ignorant. It's only that your Christian experience has remained a mockery of your convictions because you say many things that are right, but the engracing to bring defense to it is not there. So you keep telling people, this is what my Jesus can do, and they believe you. For such people, you are like the fig tree Jesus caused. It had leaves, but it could not deliver, and Jesus caused it. You thought Jesus would spare such a tree for at least being green. He cursed it. You are taken from the earth. You should deliver. It is a terrible thing to know so much about God and not be able to give witness to the things that you know. If you say God heals, at some point in your Christian experience, you should be able to demonstrate that reality. If you say God prospers, Pastor Nat, at some point, maybe not at the infancy of your journey, but at some point in your life, you should be able to taste and see, not just believe. There is an experience to the Christian faith. In Acts chapter 8 from verse 5 to 8, the Bible says Philip went down to Samaria and he preached Christ unto them. The Bible says the people gave heed with one accord. Listen, hearing and seeing the miracles that he did. They did not just hear. The Christian faith is about hearing and seeing. You say God heals, we see that God heals. You say God lives, we see that God lives. You say God can revive, we see that God can revive. Many believers are still at the realm of saying, we need to see him. Revival brings the empowerment to see what God has said. And finally, when the believer is empowered, he now becomes a witness. A witness is an envoy mandated to specific geographic locations. You become a light bearer. You carry that candle. The Bible says, neither do men light a candle. We'll be talking more about candles tomorrow. I'll be showing you what it means to be an earthen vessel. Do you notice that the candle that carries the fire is very frail? And because of the fire, sometimes the candle burns. That means you must do something to that candle if you want the fire to remain. Because if you leave the candle the way it is, eventually, by reason of use, by reason of being ethan, the candle does not match the power that comes from the fire. 
So people have devised a way of making scented candles burn. They create a system that recycles within it so that as it melts, it reforms back again. The candle can burn for a long time, even though it is frail. We'll leave that for tomorrow because the Bible says there is this treasure, but the treasure is in earthen vessels. I'll be showing you why revivals die. There is one major reason why revivals die, the humanity of men. The men who carry this fire are men, Pastor Nat. It is the reason why it dies. The same way the candle that carries the fire is a very frail candle. When the fire burns, it gives light to the room, but it also melts the candle. So a point comes, the candle melts to a point where it cannot host the fire again. Then it dies. This is what has killed many revivals. I will be showing you a secret tomorrow and in subsequent sessions how ordinary people can assume a mold in the spirit that though they are like candles, they can last for many years. You will see a candle, but it will still remain after 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. When other candles are going off, it's not enough to light the candle. You must know how to keep the candle strong. Let's pray. Let's pray. God spoken to you tonight we call it a sound of revival now I think I should just make the altar call and then we'll pray you heard me speak while Pastor McDowell ministered while Pastor Nathaniel ministered and as I came on stage the Spirit of God began to speak to you telling you that you need to make your ways right with Jesus tonight this is why he brought you he brought you to help you he brought you to lift you he brought you to reveal himself to you are we learning now yes and I believe that there are precious people who have come here by the spirit and whilst you're listening to me many more falling online you're saying apostle whilst you were speaking about the three gifts that we receive at salvation. I cannot say I've received any. I've not received forgiveness of sins because I've not asked him to. I cannot say I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus because my sins are not even washed. And I cannot say I'm a recipient of the life of God. Tonight is an opportunity to make it right with Jesus. No playing games. You should be tired of religion by now. You should be tired of you know, all the things that deceive. And I'm going to count one to five as our custom is. I want to call two groups of people in one. Number one, those who are saying, Apostle, this is a sound of revival for me. Let it start with me. I'm not ashamed to make it right with Jesus. I'm going to ask you to leave your seat and to run. Come and stand here. Number two, there are those who are saying, I want to rededicate my life. I cannot say I'm in a right standing with Jesus. Don't be ashamed wherever you are. As I count one to five, let's celebrate them as they come. One, come. Two, wash away my seat. Keep coming. U.S., let's celebrate salvation.
Are you celebrating salvation? Are you celebrating salvation? It's a new day for someone. A new season for someone who loves Jesus. Amazing. What a great harvest tonight for Jesus. What a great harvest tonight for Jesus. Hallelujah. Please look at me, my dear friends. By the way, for those who are watching from across the nations of the earth, we're here at the Sound of Revival in America. And I'm making this altar call, whether you're watching from your device, watching by way of television, even watching by way of a rebroadcast. Here's an opportunity to make Jesus Lord of your life. The Sound of Revival begins with a restoration, rebuilding that personal altar. And I want you to join our precious brothers and sisters who are here standing. As we declare the Lordship of Jesus over their lives, I want you to pray the same prayer right in your home, your office, wherever you can make that decision right there. Make sure you participate. Make that decision. It's a new season for you. For all of you who are here, I salute you. Thank you for the courage to leave your seat and respond to the word of the Lord. Listen, if you were the only reason why we came all the way from Nigeria, I want you to know that you are worth our coming. You are worth our coming. Hallelujah. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. You are before the lover of your soul lover of your soul. The Bible says as many who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. Are you ready to pray? Please lift your right hand with me high above your head. I want to see your right hands lifted as a sign of surrender to Jesus and please say this after me as loud and as clear as you can. Say Lord Jesus. One more time. Say Lord Jesus. Tonight I have heard your word. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sin. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I receive your life into my spirit. And I declare that Jesus is my Savior my Lord and my King, I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From tonight, I am a child of God, saved by the blood of the Lamb. I go forward ever and backward never. Amen. A big hand clap to all of them. Hallelujah. Now, please listen. I want you, I'm going to give you an instruction now. Um, because of the, the number of people that we have, you would notice that there are counselors. Here's what we want you to do. For those who are connecting online, there is a QR code that I want you to scan. And then for our counselors, you would notice they are lifting they are lifting. Uh, please, counselors, can you lift it so they see it? So you'll be given this um, card. They are going to hand the card. Make sure you have the card before you return to your seat. So you would have the card, and I want you to scan it. Fill the details there. It will help us to follow up on you. And then um, when we do ask to see you, please make sure that you are available. Can I speak over your life? And then when I do speak over their lives, please counsel us, make sure they have the card. Please don't return to your seat until you have a card. Once you have the card, you can return back to your seat rejoicing. Father, thank you for these precious ones. The Bible declares that as many who will come to you, you will in no wise cast away. I decree and I declare in the name of Jesus Christ, based on the authority of God's word that your sins are forgiven, I call you the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And I decree and declare that you are bona fide recipients of eternal life. From tonight, you go forward ever and backward 
than ever. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Congratulations. Let's give them a big hand clap. So you pick your cards and then you can return back to your seat. Counselors, just wave the cards so that they see it. And so you can pick the cards and make sure you have the card. You don't have to fill it immediately. Just return with it. And then once you're done filling it, um, if you want to pass the card physically, you can do so. Else, just fill the information. Um, you can use the QR code and then that also serves. Let's give them a big God bless you while they walk. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No, no turning Thanks for watching Revival Time Hub. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass, for he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was.